Hey, good morning, Sully. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hope all is well. No problem, man. Uh, I, ho- I hope you're not uh, insulted that the, the show is much more popular now that I'm hosting. It's a little bit <laughs> earlier, too. Uh, I don't know if I could have pulled off the pre-9, 9 a.m., <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's a good time to be doing the show. I know that uh, you know, all the action uh, on the basketball court in Atlantic City this weekend, and that's one of my favorite times of the year in South Jersey, so I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm not really enjoying the uh, the 6:30 alarm clock going off because <laughs> yeah. when I first when I took over, it was still nine to eleven. So uh, and then Mike Gill, the uh, the afternoon guy here at the radio station and the program director, he was like, "Oh yeah, Sully. By the way, uh, we're switching out to eight to 10. I was like, "Oh, you're killing me, man." <laughs> it wasn't my idea, so don't play me on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> so how's life with you, buddy? Uh, everything's good. I- I'm still a little bit sleep deprived it's been a heck of a final stretch to wednesday with this national signing day um now you're still with bleacher report feature work yes yeah um so yeah i'm a national recruiting analyst with bleacher report and uh, this is actually my fourth signing day um with the company and it definitely was our biggest and most productive recruiting cycle i got a chance to go all over the country to a ton of camps this year wow that's awesome uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to bigger and better things, and I'm, I'm really happy to be part of uh, the Bleacher Report team. And definitely, though, uh, 97.3 always has a very a soft spot in my heart, and uh, South Jersey as well in the Cape Atlantic League. So uh, anytime I get a chance to hop back on uh, the airwaves down here is awesome. Now, uh, before we get started talking signing day, what's your, uh, what's your go-to Super Bowl appetizer slash food? Oh, man. Um <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you can do it wrong with buffalo wings. I'm a big uh, big fan of buffalo wings all the time. Um, but I, I'm going to be actually attending a family party, and there's going to be about 50,000 appetizers. So <laughs> uh, not going to be lacking. I think, you know, it's just going to be, uh, you know, Monday is going to have to be a day where it get back on the grind. Um, there you after, go. Yeah, I think everyone kind of feels that way on the Monday after the uh, Super Bowl, but there will not be a lack of, of options uh, on, on on the table for me on Sunday. Nice. So let's talk uh, recruiting day or signing day with the recruits. Obviously, it's it's a huge day uh, at high schools throughout the country. They get the uh, table set up. They get you know the kids get out there with the the t-shirts and the hats and everything else. What's your impression of signing day in general? It's such a it's become such a big part of high school football. It's huge. I mean, uh, there's a time that there would be maybe six, seven um, live commitments on, on like an ESPN2 or an ESPNU. And that would be like kind of the national deal you would see. And then you maybe would read some stuff in the paper about more of the local scene. With social media today, now you can really watch every commitment as they happen or instantly after they happen. And everybody's always trying to, to switch things up a little bit different, uh, throw a surprise in the mix. Um, at Bleacher Report, we've become pretty known for some of the videos that we drop. Um, I don't know how many we ended up doing this recruiting cycle, but I believe we had seven or eight in the past, the final three days of this cycle of the week, this week. And, um, you know, local fans uh, might remember the Amir Mitchell commitment. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Amir Mitchell commitment to Michigan, and obviously he's now at Rutgers, but uh, that was one uh, on the local front uh, that, that some people might be aware of. But uh, it's become such a big deal, and, and, and really the Super Bowl of college football recruiting and, and college football recruiting has probably never been – more popular, and, and it does really have a, a direct correlation to who wins championships. If you look at the final five to ten rankings year in, year out, the teams that are contending for college football playoff spot, and you go back and look at their recruiting classes from two, three, four years ago, they're also in the top ten classes typically, except for maybe their Cinderella squad that will sneak into the mix like a Houston or a Boise State. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. and It's a 365-day year thing for coaches and recruits once they get those offers coming in it's really a big part of their life until they get to national signing day so i think for everybody it's an opportunity to, to decompress a little bit for a few days and then uh, i know a lot of the coaches and me personally took a shift right to 2018 one of my colleagues will be at a camp in houston today actually getting a good look at the 2018 class so it really is uh, cyclical and it, they don't there's not much of a gap between those cycles now, what do the college coaches think of all these videos and all the, the pomp and circumstance that goes behind these signing day announcements? Are, are they kind of like, oh, geez, I got this 18-year-old kid who thinks he's king of the world? Uh, well, <laughs> they know most of these kids think they're king of the world. Um, <laughs> if, if, if you're a kid committed in Ohio State or Alabama or USC, 
you've probably been the guy that's been talked about in your in your community for a couple of years now, and you've probably been the guy who's been identified since you were seven years old as the best athlete, the break playground in your class. So with these videos, I would say coaches absolutely love them if the players come into their school because it's it's in a way it's, it's very much uh, free publicity. That's true. Uh, free yeah, rec- free recruiting reach out. Um, you know, and, and everyone, you know, not everybody wants to be a trendsetter. Some kids are more the mindset of a follower. Um, so if they, you know, they're going to try to see where the wind's blowing and if the wind's blowing to a certain school or campus and they want to be part of that and they want to jump on the hype bandwagon, a video like that can, you know, really increase exposure for a program. And, um, you know, so, so that it, it, it's definitely, you know, uh, there's, you can get some saltiness coming from <laughs> maybe a team that came in number two. Um, but, you know, that, that's kind of how the recruiting game works. We're talking with Tyler Donahue, former host of the South Jersey Sports Report, who's now a national recruiting analyst for Bleacher Report. Uh, Tyler, with these videos, obviously we saw the one with Amir Mitchell coming out of Cedar Creek and, and some of these other ones, uh, the, the, really well done, very cool. How do, you, how do you go about Do you guys come up with the ideas or do the, do you, the high school players kind of tell you what they're thinking? What's the process like for putting one of these videos together? It's a pretty collaborative effort. Um, for my role, I'm more of a middleman. We have a great video production team up in New York City that, that handles the uh, the duties of actually flying to some of these uh, different locations and, and and doing all the waiver releases and, and actually getting down to the nitty-gritty with players and their families to film these and eventually release them. Uh, but it, it is like, uh, you know, they like to ask the players, you know what? Do you, what's important to you? You know what means a lot to you? Uh, do you? Who would you want to be in the video? Where would you want the video to to take place? I, I know with Amir, Atlantic City was was close to his heart, so they said, okay, let's incorporate Atlantic City, and then ended up taking place. You know, ending on the boardwalk with the banner plane going by and saying right. "Go Blue" on the banner plane. Um, you know, but all kids, you know, some kids really like. We had a kid who was really into The Walking Dead, so we had him <laughs> fight off. We had him going through the woods fighting off zombies with wow. uh, the college football <laughs> shirts of his other finalists. Oh, really? And, fi- and, and finally, the one that he was friends with had the Michigan shirt on. Uh, oh. <laughs> so that was another Michigan commitment video. But uh, there, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, there's, there's so much variety to it. And, um, you know, our, our video team has a lot of fun with it. And But ultimately, they know it's it's something for the kid, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. So um, it's a two-way street as far as the development for production goes. Yeah, they're definitely really cool. I'm I'm waiting for like some sort of comedy one. There's got to be a some you know offensive lineman out there or something or or like a re- wide receiver or whatever who's got a little bit of a funny streak to him. There was just one where two guys committed to UCLA, um, and it was a replication of the scene from Old School where the guys get abducted in the van. Um, I don't know <laughs> if you're familiar with that, but yeah, that, yeah. that was that was one of the funnier ones I've seen. Nice. Let's talk real quick, uh, Tyler. We got a couple of minutes left here before we go to break. Let's talk about Rutgers. Obviously, big interest in South Jersey with Rutgers, and they got a real nice class coming in. Obviously, Bo Melton and and Owen Bowles from Cedar Creek, uh, but they've got some other great players. Uh, Jonathan Lewis, outstanding quarterback prospect. What do you think of their recruiting class? You know, it's pretty good for for the calamity that often was their their 2016 season. And as an alum, it hurts to say that, but. It was definitely a season where they kind of knocked everything down and tried to build it back up again, and that's not always easy. Uh, a lot of excitement about the staff uh, as far as the motivation they bring into the facility and, and recruits pick up those vibes. And you mentioned the Cedar Creek connection, huge to, to build a pipeline like that with an emerging powerhouse program. And I guess they're there now. I mean, Cedar Creek didn't take long to get to that point with Coach Tim Watson, but with Bo, Bo Melton and Owen Bowles, and now you've got both uh, Amir Mitchell and Damon Mitchell on this roster for the 2017 season. That's big time uh, for future Cedar Creek players. They're going to look at Rutgers as a potential pipeline option. You mentioned Jonathan Lewis, big body quarterback. I think he'll fight for reps as a freshman. I got a chance to see him in Los Angeles at uh, the Elite 11 Finals, which is uh, 25 of the top quarterbacks in the country. He set right in. Uh, he's a really, you know, six foot four, sturdy, uh, can move from a powerhouse program, uh, St. Peter's Prep up in North Jersey. And then I think offensive line, I mean, we mentioned Owen Bowles from Cedar Creek. I really like the, the group they bring in. They bring in uh, Michael Clark uh, from St. John Vianney up in North Jersey, uh, Samuel Veteran 
Um, he's actually from Europe, but he fin- he finished at a prep school in Connecticut. He's a guy who I think is raw, but has a lot of opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, some of the guys they're able to get late, like Eddie Lewis, uh, wide receiver from Modern Day High School in Middletown, New Jersey. He That's was a, a nice a kid, man. And, he's a good player, yeah. man. I saw him against yeah. Holy Spirit in the state championship game. He's a heck of a player. Exactly. So you know exactly what he pulled off in that game, a game when he touched down yep. uh, to get the state title. And that was uh, – there was some – question about whether he was going to end up at Rutgers. He had a couple options, and uh, you know, he, he did go to Rutgers. So, that's, that's a steal uh, for them, did. man. He's he's a heck, big-bodied wide receiver, got some speed, yes. great hands. And then, you know, you put him and, and Melton in, in the passing game, and it looks like Bo's going to end up a wide receiver predominantly. I think you could play about three or four positions if you wanted to. Uh, but you put those guys at wide receiver together, it's a nice tandem. You throw Jonathan Lewis in there, a quarterback, and that's really what Rutgers needs to get going. They've had uh, some really strong issues right now uh, with the passing game the past few years. A lot of inconsistencies, and maybe this is a group that can help stabilize things. Good stuff, Tyler. A lot of excitement around Rutgers. We appreciate you taking a few minutes. We'll catch up with you uh, in a couple of months here, see what's going on in the summertime with some of these guys. Hey, thanks, and a big shout-out to another Cape Atlantic League guy, Mark Bell, going to Maryland. Congratulations to him on signing. Uh, nice to see the CAL reps well on National Signing Day. Sully, I appreciate it. And a lot of love to the 97.3 listeners out there. Definitely, man. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Take care. That was Tyler Donahue, National Recruiting Analyst for Bleacher Report. Appreciate him checking in.